This video will discuss hemispheric specialization in the brain. We'll start off with a story about a patient in his 60s who was a war veteran who had been suffering from multiple seizures every week for the past decade. Some doctors had proposed that he might benefit from a rare surgical procedure that involved cutting or severing the corpus callosum, the white matter tract in the middle of our brain. It had been done on a few patients in the past, um, and there hadn't been any major side effects although it was still contentious at the time because research from the animal sciences showed that in chimps and monkeys, this had actually altered brain function. Nevertheless, the patient still underwent the surgery, and on all counts, it was a pretty successful one. The patient felt no different. His temperament, intellect, personality were all unchanged, and most importantly, his seizures stopped. And so it began that the surgery became an option to help many patients suffering from these types of seizures. But interestingly, as a result from the surgery, where patients became known as split brain patients, all communication was halted between the two hemispheres. They became functionally independent. The left and right hemisphere of the brain could no longer talk to each other. Even though it seemed like the patients were perfectly fine, a prominent researcher, Michael Gazzaniga, had found a way to isolate and communicate to each hemisphere directly. To understand how this is done, let's go over some anatomy really quickly. When we look at a scene or look at anything, we have a left visual field and a right visual field. Items in our left visual field are processed in the right hemisphere, and items in our right visual field are processed in the left hemisphere. This path crosses at the optic chiasm, and it remains intact even when the corpus callosum is severed. So if all communication is severed between the two halves, then information presented just to the right hemisphere, or just to the right visual field rather, would be fed into the left side of the brain only, and information presented to the left visual field would be sent to the right side only. So experimentally, researchers isolate this by having participants focus on a middle dot in a visual array like this. Then they would flash up a word like dog on the right, and that would be sent to the left hemisphere. On another trial, researchers would flash up tree on the left side with the participants still focusing on the middle dot, and this would travel to the right hemisphere. Early experiments using this methodology revealed some groundbreaking results for its time. When one patient was flashed a picture of a spoon to the right visual field, the patient said he saw a spoon. But when a picture flashed to the left visual field, when asked, the patient said he didn't see anything. Amazingly, the right hemisphere had no way of communicating what it had seen. It wasn't that the patient was blind to seeing it. When trained to communicate like non-verbally with Morse code with his left hand, he responded correctly even though he verbally said he saw nothing. As a side note, the left hand was used here because the right side of the brain controls the left side of the body. So this was an amazing discovery that the left hemisphere was the only hemisphere that could communicate, and that language was lateralized in the brain. More experiments showed hemispheric differences on different spatial tasks like this block design task. Patients here could not arrange four red and white blocks into a simple pattern when using the right hand. So the left hemisphere, which controls the right hand, had a difficult time solving this spatial problem. But when using his left hand, the patient had no problem on this test. So the right hemisphere was great on this test, which should, uh, or which showed that other specialized systems in the right hemisphere do exist. Over the following decades, and even today, the popular press has really picked up on these findings and created this concept of left brain and right brain people, and that they pretty much just think differently about the world. Essentially, this boiled down to the left hemisphere being analytical and logical, while the right hemisphere is creative and musical and intuitive. There are several popular science books written, um, written based on this how artists are right brain people and mathematicians and engineers are left brain people. Well, this is a gross exaggeration. The overwhelming majority of cognitive processes and capabilities are redundant in the brain. That means that they're represented and depend on both hemispheres, on multiple areas, especially when 
your corpus callosum is perfectly fine with normal, healthy individuals. There are fundamental differences between the hemispheres. There's no doubt about that. But the way that these authors who write these articles and books extrapolate is just a little too much because the idea that people use one hemisphere, uh, hem sorry, excuse me, the idea that people use one hemisphere more than the other is just not correct.